How's it going guys? My name's Graham. Welcome to Two Left Thumbs. Friday Night Funkin' has been the little indie that could. Starting as a game jam project, this free online game has been continuously rolling out updates in a weekly style, expanding the game with new music, events, and characters. It's been a lot of fun to follow along with and very cool to see the gameplay, artistic and musical stylings, rhythm mechanics, and story all unfold in this fashion. It's like tuning into a weekly TV series. And it's been incredible how quickly it's blown up. The game now has well over 5 million views on Newgrounds alone, with over half of that coming in the most recent month. I wanted to pay tribute to that by doing an Easter egg secrets and references video on Friday Night Funkin'. I feel super late to the party on this one. Only just today I would have released my own gameplay of it over on Graham Games. That's like the slowest following of a trend of all time. You could call it bandwagoning, but I think that wagon is already across the country at this point. I'm jogging along trying to catch up before it finishes its trip. More than references, this game has a fair amount of unused content people have discovered in the game files. I'll be showing off some interesting things from that as well. But not any of the leaks. Things that the developers have specifically said they don't want shown. I think that's in poor taste. First off, I thought it would be a good idea to show the original Ludum Dare prototype just as a way to help show how the game has taken shape. This dates back to October 2020 and was created for Ludum Dare 47 with the theme Stuck in a Loop. But I had to laugh at this comment from the game's creator. I decided to make a rhythm game before the theme, and music is slightly adjacent to looping, right? Alright, you get it. I ain't rolling with the theme this time around. I just wanted an excuse to make a cool game over the weekend. The classic game jam move of picking your theme, genre, or gameplay elements first and hammering that square game into the round hole of the jam theme. There's a running joke with the developers with the marketing of the game that it's actually some lost PlayStation 1 title, which makes sense with the obvious Parappa the Rapper and Dance Dance Revolution influences. The soundtrack artwork is made to look like a PS1 disc cover. The game page claims that it was hailed as a pretty dope ass game in PlayStation Magazine May 2003. I am curious if that issue was chosen for a specific reason. I tried to find a digital copy, I didn't see anything that would be that indicative, so it kind of seems like a random date choice? It's a shame, since one month later, June 2003, would have been issue 69 of PlayStation Magazine. But a missed opportunity. Between the opening screens of In Association with Newgrounds and the title screen, there is a randomized piece of text that usually includes a joke. It reminds me a lot of the couch gags seen in shows like Simpsons or Futurama. Shoutouts to Tom Fulp Lamau. <laughs> Tom Fulp is the creator of Newgrounds, and Newgrounds has been a huge proponent of supporting and hyping up Friday Night Funkin'. Ludum Dare Extraordinaire, obviously since the game originated in a Ludum Dare game jam. Cyber Zone, coming soon. This seems to be a running gag with the devs. I'm not in on the joke either, I'm totally lost on this one. Love to Thrift Man, swag. Ultimate Rhythm Gaming, probably. Dope Ass Game, PlayStation Magazine, keeping that whole joke going in loving memory of Henry Eyes. Henry Eyes was a creator who passed away in 2020. Dancing forever. Funkin forever. Ritz DX, rest in peace, lol. Ritz is a game programmed by Ninja Muffin with music and sound effects from Kawaii Sprite. They at one point planned to update it as Ritz DX, but their focus is obviously elsewhere now. Rate 5, please no blam. Rating 5 and no blam are references to the Newgrounds rating and filtering systems in their automated portal. Rhythm Gaming Ultimate. Game of the Year Forever. You already know, we really out here. Rise and Grind, Love to Lewis. Done in tribute to renowned Newgrounds animator Lewis Castanon. Like Parappa, but cooler. Obviously in reference to Parappa the Rapper. Album of the Year, Chucky Finster. Chucky Finster, while being a Rugrats character, is also the title of an album released by Kawaii Sprite. Since I'm mentioning it, the Friday Night Funkin' soundtrack is all on Spotify as well, and is doing big numbers over there. Free Guitaru Man, with love to Wanda Boy. This is a play on the free blank slogans, usually in response to a wrongful imprisonment. But Guitaru Man is instead a PlayStation 2 rhythm game that was very well received, then kind of fell off the face of the earth. It had a PSP port, we never really heard from them again. Wanda Boy is a Newgrounds artist, a friend of the developers, and a big time fan of Guitaru Man. Better than Geometry Dash. Fight me, Rob Top. Rob Top Games is the creator of Geometry Dash. Kid Brute for President. Vote now. 
Play Dead Estate on Newgrounds. Yes, do do this. Or maybe even go wishlist the Steam version? Hmm? For real though, you should 100% do that after this video. It would help us out so much to show Steam people are interested in that game. The Milk Bar lads and the Friday Night Funkin' team are good pals and are always joshing each other online, but at the same time they're also constantly hyping each other up like this. This is a goddamn prototype. We working on it, okay? Women are real. This is official. I assume this is just the team poking fun at fan theories that get out of control, with even the most minute detail being debated as possibly canon or not. Too overexposed. Newgrounds can't handle us. I'm assuming this one was added later on once the game started blowing up and getting millions of views. Hatsune Miku, biggest inspiration. They are a character voice synthesization software developed by Krypton Future Media. Fun fact, if you were to break apart and translate her name from Japanese, it's roughly the first sound of the future, referring to her being Krypton's first in their character vocal series. Too many people, my head hurts. New grounds forever, which I adhere deeply to that creed. Refined taste in music, if I say so myself. His name isn't Keith, dumb eggy lol. His name isn't Evan, silly TikTok. Both of which are D confirmations of the main character boyfriend's actual name. Stream Chucky Finster on Spotify. Never forget to pray to God. Swag shit, money money. At one point in the mix, they also had Nintendo Switch pre-orders now available, but this was removed presumably because it was causing confusion with millions of players then looking for the Nintendo Switch port and coming asking for that, raiding the Discord. Yeah, probably not best to joke about that when it's something people legitimately want. All of these are different new grounds creators and artists. There are more than this, but these are the only ones that were available at the time of Week 4's release. After releasing that Game Jam build, they knew immediately that this was a game worth expanding. For the fuller web version that came after, the art of the boyfriend, girlfriend, and dad all remained unchanged. But we do have this spiffy new logo art from the one and only Johnny Utah, as well as some new character icons for the showdown bar. In the final version, this environment is reused for the tutorial, now with girlfriend on a set of speakers instead of these generic rectangles. Apparently this was just a random fan suggestion, so that's really cool that that made it into the final game. And this stage is also used for the updated battles against Daddy Dearest, which by the way is the confirmed name for this character. Speaking of character names, numerous have been revealed and given for Boyfriend, like Keith, Evan, Lewis, and Jack, all of which have been confirmed as simply being jokes. Both Ninja Muffin and Phantom Arcade, the lead programmer and artist respectively, have stated that he is simply boyfriend. They just like messing with their fans a little bit here and there. The plot of the game is simplistic. Boyfriend wishes to date girlfriend, but has to earn Daddy Dearest's approval. He is an ex rock star and tests your skills by having you repeat musical phrases back to him with occasional harmonies. You'll notice there's not a particularly strong effort being made to create a continuous storyline throughout the weeks. Instead, the focus seems to be on guest appearances and thematic switch-ups, fun excuses to try out new genres of music. But as I'll show very shortly, there are clearly plans in place to solidify a fuller story upon the game's final release. The tutorial and week one battles are simple enough. We have Bo Peep Bo, Fresh, and Dad battle, with Bo Peep Bo being a sort of onomatopoeia of how the characters sing in-game. It's the first few notes of that song. So far, this is the only song in which Boyfriend performs his V pose, even though it's become an extremely recognizable part of the game, plastered all over thumbnails and other press coverage. I kind of think Dad Battle is meant to be a little play on words, you know, like a dad bod. If you fail a song, then in an overly detailed piece of art, Boyfriend dies with extreme blue balls. Ew. Week 2 added battles against Skid and Pump, which come from Sir Pilo's Spooky Month series. In that series, they were originally Skid with two Ds and Pumpy, but that was shortened in the second installment and they have been Skid and Pump ever since. The dance performed in-game whenever the duo are not singing is known as the Spooky Dance and is something seen throughout that series. That's kind of taken on a life of its own. The spooky dance is its own entire meme. But yeah, these two characters and that original animation is where that would have started. 
I'm curious if they themselves were inspired by David Pumpkins or this pumpkin dance, but they seem to be very much their own thing, with Sir Pilo sharing concept art of other iterations before they became Halloween characters, so I don't think we can attribute any specific inspirations to them. Sir Pilo themselves also provided the vocalizations for the duo. This week features only two songs instead of the usual three, but there is the rather substantial, unused content of the song and character Monster. The unused track was created by Bassett Films, and was cut due to Ninja Muffin having issues mapping it. It was just causing frustrations, wasn't coming together how they wanted, and they didn't want to put a poorly tracked song into the game. Reddit user ChaoticGamingCG took the unused assets and mapped the song themselves, receiving a Ninja Muffin seal of approval. You now see people playing this all over YouTube. It's kind of considered a semi-canon, semi-official version of this song, even though it doesn't actually appear in the game. Maybe it'll get added in officially with a later release, we'll have to see. This song actually has lyrics for the first time, with the monster singing about killing the two kids, cutting them up, and eating them. So yeah, I, I don't think there's a lot of story there that has to do with dating or relationships or anything like that. Phantom Arcade shared a video on TikTok of the intended animations for Monster that weren't available within the game files. So this unofficial mod utilizing the unused content is still lacking in that way. The character was assumed to be made in reference to Lemon Demon, a popular musician responsible for iconic Newgrounds music videos like The Ultimate Showdown. Ninja Muffin confirmed in an AMA that this was not intended. You can see some early concept art here, where the head shape started becoming more lemon-like as they played around with it, with Bassett Films' concepts also being in yellow, it's just sort of a coincidental emergence from those ideas and sketches. Interesting to see that thread of development there. As the game became increasingly popular on Newgrounds specifically, with a front page bannered feature, it only made sense that week 3 would feature the Newgrounds mascot, Pico. Pico originates from Newgrounds creator Tom Fulp's classic 1999 Flash game, Pico School. There are unused character animations that indicate that at some point Pico may be added as a playable character. You can actually force this by using the debug mode. While currently you can only play the game as boyfriend, additional playable characters were teased on Newgrounds' own YouTube channel, alongside advertisements for Captain from Tankmen, Cassette Girl by Soft Dawn, and Hank from Madness as other Newgrounds-specific playable characters. Seemingly, the art is all ready to go for those, but they aren't in-game yet. Cassette Girl is notable for being a character created outside of Friday Night Funkin', but is the only one of these four that has never actually been featured in their own animation or game. It became fan headcanon that Pico and Boyfriend are exes. Tom Fulp himself rolled with it and chimed in stating this was true. There was a bit of a back and forth where Ninja Muffin claimed I was unofficial, we're all just joking around, until deciding to lean into it and make it official series canon. Pico and BF are canonically exes. That is real. That is not meme. That is real. Maybe we're starting to see some more plot points being pinned down. It was recently confirmed by Phantom Arcade on stream that there is a story taking place here, and that Pico was a hired mercenary sent to kill an unknown target. Uh, the story behind Pico... Pico in like in this like future pretty much he's a merc who was hired by the dad to go fuck with the boyfriend after the boyfriend humiliated the dad by beating him in the first stage. Pico Pico doesn't quite know who he's being sent to kill until he gets there and then he finds out that it's somebody he used to know. The first song titled Pico is meant to serve as a tribute to the semi-official Newgrounds theme song Endless Handbag Song. While the music itself is paying tribute to that, it's also been suspected that Pico's vocal lines performed by Kawhi Sprite are based on this short segment of that original song. Now, dive into the endless handbag known as your imagination. 
imagination. I don't think they were literally sampled, but that could have been the influence. Pico's second song is titled Philly Nice. Newgrounds' main office is located in Philadelphia, and it's assumed that this week is set there as well. Philly Nice is a phrase used to refer to how people from Philadelphia interact. God damn it! I don't know how to express myself unless through anger and personal attack! I'm getting very upset because I'm not saying right! Outsiders may perceive their blunt, direct nature as rude, but you know, it's simply Philly Nice. I don't know if this was the direct inspiration, but the silhouetted background looks a lot like the opening city setting of another classic Tom Folk Flash game, Alien Hominid. And with Newgrounds being located in Philly, maybe Philly was the inspiration for Alien Hominid and it's all cascading from there. The third song is titled Bland, which again refers to that Newgrounds portal. Creators can submit their work, which will first remain under judgment, during which phase users vote on the work on a scale of 0 to 5, and if after a certain vote threshold, the creation is under a set average score, it is blammed or deleted and does not remain on the site. Week 4, as I already mentioned, saw the addition of The Mom. This battle takes place on top of a limousine. The vocals were provided by L0L, it's Monica, known for voicing Veggie in Has Been Hotel. The backup demon dancers appear to be references to MC Hammer, mimicking his iconic look with parachute pants and open jacket and sunglasses. They obviously have his same moves and swagger as well. Like I mentioned, we have two new weeks released as well. Since the game is still being updated as well, we know there's more to come. And I think a good way to break this up would be to cover them in quote months. So even though six weeks are now released, I'll only be covering the first four. But hey, that means we're only two week releases away from having a second one of these videos. How about a few more random unused assets? There is a collection of speech bubbles that are never used. Presumably they'll be utilized in the final game when they work to expand that story. It seems like maybe they had more of a story in mind at the beginning and were planning to have the characters act that out, maybe have some sort of cutscenes or dialogue between them, but these plans were delayed to allow the game to properly take shape first. I think that's a wise decision when they're creating things so iteratively. Don't force yourself in any particular way, let things evolve more naturally, leave yourself open to any crazy guest cameos that might come up, and worry about fitting it together later. With that in mind, week 2 is seemingly the only of these first four to not really have a story taking place, but that could still be expanded on in the future. The Boyfriend has animations for an attack and dodge, although they are never present in the game. It's been confirmed that things like this animation are unused gameplay mechanics. Originally, we planned on the game being much more gameplay-y, with like attacks and dodges and all that. We might still do those. Or this is something that'll be a part of the eventual multiplayer mode. Which yes, they have directly indicated is the plan. There is a song chart using week 1 assets simply titled Rich, although there was no music. Users figured out that the chart matches perfectly with Urban Fragments, from the Ridge Racer Type 4 OST. It's most likely this was a testing track to nail down mechanics and practice mapping and charting songs, and was never actually meant to be a part of the game. Although obviously industrious fans have modded things for that to be playable. At one point the game contained this sprite for Lucky Boy, a little sock puppet with a shoebox guitar. This was kind of snuck into the game as a joke by the developer's friend Brandy. It's unclear if they plan to do anything with this, but it is no longer officially in the game in any way. If you root around in some of the other game's files, you can find old bits of concept art, a few character sketches. Here we can see sketches for Kid Brute and Evil Skater, friends of the devs and contributors to the game, maybe someday they'll still make it in. There were also quite a few sketches found with the mom's files. We have this foaming at the mouth stalker concept, Stan, which is one of Johnny Utah's characters to be featured in the upcoming Nightmare Cops, this cat stalker, another stalker, and yet another stalker. I have a few more quick things from Ninja Muffin's AMA that I think people will find interesting. They're the sort of questions people are commonly asking, so you know, I might as well make that information conveniently available. The plan is to bring the finished game to Steam, Nintendo Switch, and maybe Epic, but not as an exclusive. 
He is a big fan of the mods people have made, and seeing that fan input and enthusiasm makes him very happy. Fans have spotted the left and right spots are labeled Player 1 and Player 2 in the game files. Ninja Muffin has confirmed that there's a reason, and it's assumed that the finished game will support two-player multiplayer showdowns. That's probably where different character selects will come into play, maybe those battle animations as well. Head-to-head -head battles in Guitar Hero were awesome and have always been an important part of other rhythm games, so I'm really excited to see that coming back here. For now, that's everything I have to share about the game. Once weeks 7 and 8 have been released, I plan to make a second video, and then you know, we'll go from there. As mentioned before, definitely go wishlist Dead Estate, and yeah, you can play it for free on Newgrounds, but a fully expanded version is coming to Steam. If you like action roguelike shooters or games with cool pixel art and horror themes, then yeah, you're gonna like that. And it comes Friday Night Funkin' Approved. So what are you waiting for? Thank you to patrons of the channel. Look at all these MVPs on the screen here. What a what a bunch of buttes. Feels really nice to put together a slightly shorter references video. Just a just nice a nice change of pace for me. I promise the fourth and final part of the completing the mission references is coming. It just takes a crazy amount of time. Shorter videos like this help fill in the weeks while I work on that. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you again soon.